Ah, welcome back, Dr. Atkinson. You survived the syllabus change. Well done, IB, for putting in TNT in airbags. A bit more interesting than the normal one-of-the-mill gas question. Dr. Atkinson found a DeLorean. I wonder if it has a flux capacitor. It does. All right, then. So airbags contain just under 200 grand. Oh my, is that Marty McFly there? I think that's his DeLorean. Contained just under 200 grams of a chemical that reacts explosively and fills the airbag in the event of an accident. Now don't worry, the red isn't blood, it's just airbags. It's an exothermic reaction, so his face got very hot from the airbag. Dr. Atkinson's looking for assistance. Yes, why not a flare gun? Oh, it's red, just like lithium, the line spectra of lithium. TNT burns with a black smoke. Oh, is that it? I was hoping it'll be a bit bigger than that, Thornley. Okay, that's more like it. Yes, there's a distinctive black smoke of TNT, particulate solid carbon. All right, less of this silliness. Let's get on with some stoichiometry. So let's look at airbag chemistry first. NaN3 is sodium azide. You don't need to learn that name. And it produces lots of nitrogen gas to fill the airbag. But unfortunately, it also produces sodium. Sodium reacts with water violently. You're 70% water. You make the connection. All right, so how do I get rid of that sodium? Well, the sodium goes into a second equation where it reacts with potassium nitrate to make sodium oxide and potassium oxide. These are less dangerous than sodium, but they're still very, very basic. Oh, and a little bit of extra nitrogen to inflate the bag. So those oxides of sodium and potassium have to be removed because they're basic, it will burn you still. And they go into a third equation where they, where they react with silicon dioxide, which is essentially super powdered sand, and it makes those two chemicals. So that's a glassy kind of material, a silicate glass, and that's safe. All right, what's the pressure of nitrogen in an airbag? I couldn't find it on the internet, but I could find this other data so I thought we'd use that data to try and work out the pressure in a, in a regular airbag. I'm not going to use the third equation. There's no nitrogen produced in that. I don't need that. Nitrogen is the gas that fills the airbag. All right, tidy it up a bit. And let's do the boxes for stoichiometry. This is where you tell me that your teacher uses the factor label method. And good luck with that. I much prefer the boxes. All right, moles, mass, molar mass. Mass is 195 from the question, and the molar mass is 65. I'm not using decimal places for clarity, but you have to in the IB anyway. 2 is to 3, as 2 is to 3, as 3 is to 4.5. The moles go with the ratio of the, of, the, of the coefficients. You could do cross multiplication. 2 is to 3, as 3 is to x. Anyway, so it's 4.5 moles of nitrogen. All right, is that how much nitrogen I have that I can use the other data with? No, 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 no. There was nitrogen produced in the second equation, wasn't there? Yep, there's the nitrogen there. So how many moles of sodium? Some people think 10, because it says 10. Some say two, some say three. You know what? It's three moles of sodium. It's three moles of sodium, because look at, look at the equation above. Three moles of sodium. They are in purple. Okay, so 10 is to 3 as 1 is to, I don't know. Okay, so the answer is 0.3. All right. So how much nitrogen gas has been made in total? 4.5 plus 0.3. So 4.8 moles. That's my noisy neighbours. I used to edit that out. All right, tidy up a bit. So uh, we have to assume that nitrogen's an ideal gas. That's, uh, that's the only assumption you can make in IB. So PV equals NRT. So the volume 60 from the question, number of moles, I just worked that out. Gas constant, 8.31 in the data booklet. Temperature, 350. No, no and no. It's got to be in Kelvin. If it's not in Kelvin, then it's wrong. So let's add 273 to that temperature to get it into Kelvin. Rearrange the equation and to get the pressure. So the pressure is going to be 414 kilopascals or 410 kilopascals because there's two sig figs in the question. That seems about right. 
about four times atmospheric pressure. Okay, let's look at the chemistry of TNT. That makes three gases, nitrogen, water vapor, and carbon dioxide, uh, carbon monoxide, excuse me. And the carbon, now that's the solid, that's the black smoke that you see from a TNT exploding. All right, I read that a gram of TNT produces a decimeter cubed of gas, 25 degrees C and 100 kilopascals. That's all over the internet. So let's just double check that that's true. Set up my table and work out the moles of TNT. Lovely. And using the top line as the ratios, I can work out the moles of the gases. Not going to worry about the carbon, it's a solid. We're doing the gas laws here. Alrighty, so again, assuming it's an ideal gas, PV equals NRT, I want to check the volume. So it's going to be, volume is NRT over P. Let's put the numbers in. Number of moles of gas, well, it's the sum of those three. Multiply by the gas constant. Temperature in Kelvin. And divide by 100 kilopascals. That comes out at 0.81 decimeters cubed. That's about right, isn't it? Yeah, so a gram makes about a decimeter cubed. Okay. At college, I made DNT. It's one of the labs we had to do, dinitrotoluene. And people were tempted to try for the trinitrotoluene. But our lab uh, technician told us that people make explosives just once. 